Okay, guys, so I hope you got something nice for lunch. All right, you managed to get something. All right, I know it was a short lunch. Um, but again, we'll just be finished now approximately around the 12 o'clock mark, give or take. And um, that'll be two o'clock in Estonian and Finnish time. And uh, one o'clock in Basque time. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to look at some items. Just going to share here with the uh, another slide that we have ready or presentation that we've got ready, and we're just going to look at sort of kind of what we call part two of the sustainable gastronomy module, and we're going to be thinking about our customers now and what our customers want particularly with regard to, as we understand this, health, healthier options, um, which is great, sort of ideas that we may have for customers. The most important thing that we need to know and we need to understand is that our customers are really what should guide us, but we can influence them in the things that we create for them to enjoy. All right. So, um, Contemporary consumer behavior is a big issue and consumer behavior does change. So trends, fashions, fads to do with food. Um, and the modern consumer, the modern customer has certainly become more aware of environmental issues, has become more aware of their, their carbon footprint and are beginning to choose restaurants and uh, food outlets based on what they're also doing with the environment. So when we're thinking about our dishes, it's good to have that in the back of the mind because that is the trend that's going forward. Uh, let's look at dish design. What can we do? You know, menu dish design and recycling and reusing. All right, that's, that's really important in your futures going forward, in all our futures, but your futures in particular going forward uh, because that's what you can bring as an added skill to whatever place that you're going working in after you finish your time in your respective colleges institutions all right so they will know that you can cook because you've gone through the program and you know it, it's there but what else can you bring to them when you're going for jobs and stuff like that so that's really really important because sustainability also incorporates you the individual and what's sustainable for you and your career and it's really important that we remember that as well. Now, we're not going to go into every single detail here, but it's just to try to name a few things. Um, determinants of food choice in contemporary society, really important. Um, hunger, appetite and taste, they're biological determinants. They're always there. Um, but taste is a big one because consumer tastes are changing. All right. The, the more the world gets smaller, the more that we become adventurous in our tastes. Um, again, just to make a comparison with my own lifetime um, and what's gone on with me. I mean, I never ate chili. Uh, it does, it's not common here in Ireland. Or it wasn't when I was growing up. Um, so I didn't get to taste chili until I was in London when I was um, 17, many moons ago. That was my first experience of a lot of different foods was in London. So that, that was really interesting for me. And, and you know, now I love chili. I'd have chili with everything. But again, it's people because the world is getting smaller. People have traveled more. They're experiencing more. And then they're, they're looking for those kind of food items or to stimulate their food senses um, by what we can do inside in kitchens now as well within their own home country. So it also then has to be cost. That's like cost has to, you have to be cost conscious today as well. People aren't going to spend hundreds of euro on meals every single week. I mean, you know, money is uh, valuable. Um, I know I shouldn't have to say that, but I think sometimes we have to say that. And uh, people work hard for their money. So they want to make sure that when they're spending it, they're getting good value for money. Now, we can still do that and be environmentally friendly and also ensure that we're giving them healthy options. So, you know, like it can be done. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, cheap food, cheap, cheap, cheap at all costs. Uh, what we can do is we can become adventurous and we can become skilled in creating dishes that are within a cost region, cost base. Um, we spoke earlier on about education, skills, time to cook, um, access to 
um, cooking facilities, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that's a real important issue for contemporary consumer behavior. Uh, people have less and less time. Uh, the contemporary world has become time poor, even though we have all this technology around us that's supposed to make it, uh, our lives easier, but we end up spending less and less time uh, doing things like cooking and stuff like that. So you have a role in that uh, when you develop your careers and with your menus and be able to attract people in by creating something that they cannot create at home or it would be difficult for them to create at home. But again, still being conscious of what's around them. Um, really important. Um, culture, society and meal patterns, you know, and again, mood, stress and guilt, they all inform us of what we want to eat. Um, I know it myself, culture and society. Uh, I grew up in Ireland. Our, our main thing that we eat is actually meat. It's not seafood, even though we're a small island. You would think it would be seafood, but it's not seafood. It's meat. It's always been meat. Um, the Romans were writing about Irish meat eating 2,000 years ago. Um, cattle was currency in Ireland uh, right up until the Middle Ages or just after the Middle Ages. So the currency was actually cattle and dairy produce. That was the currency that was used in Ireland in our old history. And that culture is really, really important in that sense as well, because we can make changes absolutely and introduce new things. But what we cannot do is lose what we already have there as well. But we can look at it, use it, and see can we bring it into the modern era, being environmentally friendly, being um, conscious of food waste, um, being conscious of the locality and what we have available in our locality. Um, MTU, where I am today, it's in the very southwest of Ireland, in those little legs that stick out at the very southwest of Ireland. So we're on the very fringes of Europe, if you want to put it that way, um, and the western fringes of Europe. Um, but within this county, we, we have counties. Some places have provinces and districts. We have counties. That's how our system is based. So within this county of Kerry that I'm in, we've actually over 150 food producers in this county alone. So when we check it and when you actually go looking, you can find an awful lot of things within your region and within your locality. And a lot of them are producing seasonal produce in that as well. Um, it'll be more so abundant in the summertime and, and you know, at the end of the summer in particular, when things um, have matured and then they're, they're in their proper, they're at their best to use. But there's stuff there today that we can use. I have a shop next door to me, just, you know, 100 meters up the road. And it's a local baker that bakes uh, bread that's uh, from West Kerry and it brings it in here to Tralee and sells here. And that shop is, tries to stay as local as possible. So I try to do an awful lot of shopping there. But again, that's an awful lot to do with education as well. So if people don't know this or don't know how to work with it or don't know where they can source it, that's the education side. So all those things, the contemporary consumer behavior, they're all very, very important. And we should try and be thinking about that as well when we're thinking about our wider sustainable um, food offerings that we're trying to prepare. That culture and society, as they are wherever we're working, are also part of that sustainability. There's no point in having sustainability if we lose cultures. It, it defeats the purpose of it. Um, the preferences. Okay, so and again, this is kind of from some studies that have been done out there. Um, must be edible and palatable, all right? And edible doesn't just mean food for a function that you eat and you're saying, but palatable means, you know, it, it's nice to eat. They, they enjoy it. They get an experience from it. And that fits in with good taste and flavor, all right? So, so whatever we're doing, it must be good taste and flavor. And that's why there's a fear of veganism in particular and sort of those type of diets and a lot of plant-based diets, particularly for countries who have culturally our meat or fish eaters, um, is that they find that they think that this food isn't palatable. So when you're designing a, a, a dish in particular, or menus around this, like, so you've got to consider those things, is that what people may perceive it to be uh, before they even taste it. So it's got to be attractive to them. It must be affordable, like we said, and it should be healthy. Now, again, 
you know, uh, I have a different take on this. Like all food is healthy. If you're hungry, whatever you're eating is healthy. All right, because it keeps, it sustains you. Um, but what we must try to do is make our food offerings as healthy as possible or healthier is really, really important. Again, studies have shown, and you learn this as you're going through your careers, actually, the healthier the food, the more satisfying it is. And the more, the word is satiating. All right, what satiating means is that you're full, you have enough, you've enjoyed it, you're, you're adequately filled, sustained. Um, and actually, the healthier food choices that are out there actually are better at doing that certainly than engineered food or heavily processed food, which I try to avoid at all costs. Um, so even that goes down to thinking about when you're using your ingredients and goes back to the worksheet. So if you're using bullion and not making your own bullion, well, what does that bullion contain? All right, because most bullion has about, you know, 15, 20 ingredients in it, and most of them are engineered ingredients. So like, is it, are you using it solely to make your food taste nicer? because you're not sure of your food, all right? And that's a lot of reason why these things are used and why heavily processed and engineered food is used is because it's either nicely flavored or appears nicely flavored and stuff like that, but it's really hiding our probably lack of skills in that sense. So our job as chefs and as cooks and as people involved in food is to make what we have in front of us taste nice, all right? But without damaging um, or bringing in heavily engineered or heavily processed food items into, into the um, uh, menu of the dish as well. <clears throat> ideally, it should be environmentally friendly. That's becoming more and more of an issue with people out there. And ideally, it will be sustainable. And again, sustainability means an awful lot of things. And um, there's no one answer, what is sustainable, what's not sustainable. Uh, but if we think of it in terms of your sustainability in your career, and uh, the business's sustainability in being a business, the cultural sustainability of the people and the foods around you, all right, and the environmental sustainability of the planet we live on. So if we consider those things together, well, then we're creating sustainable food, all right, and that's really, really important. Sustainable food is what we're aiming ultimately to do. So when you're thinking about your dish choice or your menu choice, think about the consumer, Ensure you know who you're serving to, all right? That's really, really important. Um, so if you were cooking for here in Ireland, you know, well, what do Irish people, you know, like? You know, what are they used to? What's their sort of food culture? Um, if you're cooking in Finland, if you're cooking in Estonia, you know, there's two neighboring countries, but, um, you know, it's maybe different food cultures, different food habits there as well. So know who your consumer is. Understand your consumer and stand up where you, where you are and what you're doing. You can introduce new things to them, but what you need to do is make sure that there's a familiarity inbuilt into the food you're producing for them. All right. Ensure you develop your dish menus with consumer in mind. That goes back to that. Ensure you utilize the best and freshest of ingredients and not just the most expensive. And I think this is what you were alluding to earlier on, uh, Marcus. Okay, is that often with high end restaurants, it's based on really expensive ingredients that are often have to be imported into you um, because we think that is the um, best option for us. But actually, some of the best food I've ever had anywhere and the best tasting food has been literally where I go places is what the locals eat. All right. And because the locals know best. They know what's nice and what's not nice. All right. And we have perceptions, particularly from developed um, Western countries, we have perceptions of what we think is nice. That's a very different thing from what is actually nice. All right. Um, now, tastes and habits have changed over the years, um, but fundamentally, we still like the same things. I know myself, I mean, some of my favorite food is, again, based on Irish culture, very rustic, stews, one pot cookery, um, love meat. Um, even though I eat a lot of vegetarian food now, plant-based diet, but I still love my meat. All right, I love dairy, loads of butter, loads of milk, loads of cream. All right, but that's the culture that we have. And um, so, how do we incorporate that in? It doesn't have to be expensive. 
and it doesn't have to be all these imported goods coming into our um, um, restaurants and we're creating from that. Look outside you, look around you. Um, your dishes have to be at affordable prices and that's really key. That's going back to what I said earlier on. Uh, think about how offering the healthier options. So if you look at those worksheets that I've done for you, that's really what that's all about, is like what is the option? What's the alternative that you can offer? All right, is there a healthier alternative um, or a healthy option, a healthier option? And try to be conscious of your carbon footprint because more and more consumers are concerned about that themselves. All right, so, and uh, often in um, a modern day contemporary society, you'll have more and more customers um, asking questions about where the food comes from. Okay, so, and that's important to understand. Um, you know, the menu, the dish design, all right? So um, now we have to understand that whatever about the, um, the philosophies that we have and the ethics that we're trying to apply in the food that we're um, consuming and maybe our moral values and stuff like that to do with the environment, the food still has to taste nice. So this is where the work of an actual chef comes into play now. All right, so, but if we use things like seasonal foods, there's some of the work done for us. Mother Nature has done the work for us. It's season, it tastes, it's at its best right then and there. And um, so we don't have to do work, like I say to a lot of my own students, you, you're not spending your time covering up uh, work, all right? So trying to cover up flavors or, you know, hide other flavors because there, there's less flavor or there's no flavor, there's a different flavor in it. What you're doing is you're letting the flavors speak for themselves. So really, when you're designing your dishes, that's what you're looking for. Um, start, OK, with, the, you know, when you're designing, uh, start with understanding what you have locally. Now, here's a list of things that you can actually do. Right? So what's local to you? Now, I incorporate a thing called a circle. And what I normally do with my circles when I'm thinking about dishes is I think about 25 kilometer radius around me first. So what's available in that? It could be 50 kilometers, but it's within a sort of a, a circle area. Is there anything there that I can use there or is unique to this region? You know what I mean? And then we can spread our circles out bit by bit then after that. And what you'll find is that, yes, sometimes you know, a lot of your ingredients are coming from 100, 200, 300 kilometers away, but that's more local than coming from 10,000 kilometers away. All right, so, and this is what I mean by local. Local does, doesn't mean what's on your doorstep, but if we use this circle system and expand it out, it's like ripples, you'll see these concentric circles, is like check each circle to see what's available uh, closer to you. Find uh, inspiration from what your customers prefer. So again, that's knowing your customer. Assemble a list of preferences. Keep it simple, all right? So focus on one main ingredient. I think a lot of the times today in a lot of contemporary um, cooking, it's, you know, there's just too many ingredients on the plate. People are putting in 10, 12 different ingredients and we're not sure what we're supposed to be eating or what we're supposed to be creating. So concentrate on one ingredient, all right, and focus in on that. That's the, that's the star of the show. Um, that's the item that you're um, sending out there for people to be wowed at and enjoy and experience. And then everything else is just sort of to enhance that experience based on that one key item. So that's a real good way to do it. Um, we can still design really good plates, but we don't have to design to the point of where we're um, confusing the palate, you know? And play with colors, shapes, and textures, you, you utilizing seasonality, absolutely. But there's nothing wrong with having sort of a one textured plate or a one colored plate either all right if that's what's in season and that's what you're trying to highlight um, you can do work with those in individual ingredients themselves um, but it always doesn't have to be the half strawberry and the green leaf and mint on a plate uh, because you know you want a splash of color and that's why more and more strawberries are being used off the season because most of the strawberries are used as a garnish and actually studies show that 70% of all garnishes are thrown in the bin. So it's adding to the food waste pile when there's no need to add it to the food waste pile. Um, portion size, that's a real big thing out there. 
And um, so we're just going to talk about that for a moment. So if you want to understand healthy options, often we think about just transferring completely to a plant-based diet or whatever. No, that, 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 that can help absolutely. And I prefer the term plant-based as opposed to vegetarian because plant-based doesn't necessarily mean that you're giving up meat. It just means that you're reducing your meat um, intake, all right, which is a good thing. All right. So uh, biologically, it's a good thing. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to get rid of it completely. Um, but really, our, our biggest issue in 2021 is the size of our portions. So when we're thinking about a healthier option, it's not just about the ingredients, about the amount of ingredients that we're putting on a plate. All right. And particularly with the epidemic of obesity, um, growing more and more and more, particularly in Europe, particularly in North America, all right, particularly in the Middle East, all right, so obesity is a major problem, all right, and it is becoming more and more of a major problem. Well, that's down to consumption. So, and a lot of that sometimes is us adding more and more things to a plate to make it look bigger, whereas the right portion size, if it's the right food in season, tastes well and is satisfying, there's enough in that, you know, there really is enough in that. So um, think about your portion size, really, really important, um, particularly when we're talking about healthier food options. Um, and like highlight the ingredients, you know, everything else around the main ingredient is an add on or a support to that ingredient. So, yes, absolutely use different flavors and different spices and uh, different herbs, maybe. Again, try to keep it reasonable, try to keep it local where possible, all right? But ensure your dish is what the customer wants and not just what you want or what you like to cook. And that's a real important lesson for young chefs, particularly young chefs, and I was guilty of this as well when I was a young chef. It was always like, oh, I like this, I like working with this, I like doing this. And it may not have been the right product uh, for the consumer, okay? So uh, what the consumer wants, and then you can put your stamp on that. Okay, again, thinking about all the stuff that we talk about, about sustainable gastronomy. 